What's up, Thrashers, and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and I am back with yet another CD collection update for you guys. So, yeah, this is the last one I'm doing until I can start getting more stuff coming up, because we're approaching the 40th update, which is the next one. This is number 39. This is going to be a shorter one, because this is going to be about uh, some albums that I got on my Tennessee trip a couple of weeks ago as well as one bonus CD that I bought beforehand. I didn't really go super crazy while I was in Tennessee. I got 13 plus a bonus from uh, an album that I bought prior. But still, I got some pretty good stuff in here, so why don't we go ahead and get on to it. Kicking things off, we have Aborted with Terror Vision. This came out in 2018, and this was... Uh, Kind of a somewhat divisive album for Aborted. It's like there are people who absolutely loved this album. And then there are those who thought that good, but doesn't really do anything new for Aborted. I think it's a very damn good offering from these guys. Then again, Aborted is one of the most consistent death metal slash brutal death slash death grind bands going. And hell, actually, uh, as of recording this, they got a new album coming out next week. And when this comes out, that new album's coming tomorrow. So yeah, but Terror Vision, I think, is a well-worthy addition to the Aborted catalog. It just keeps what Aborted does best, and that's brutalize your eardrums with unbelievable brutality. So yeah, Aborted. <clears throat> Next up, we have Between the Buried and Me with Automata 2. I already had Automata 1, and I needed to get Automata 2. Then again, I need to get uh, a lot of Between the Buried and Me still. And this was the second part of, like, a two-EP run they had in 2018. Like I said, Automata 1, which came out in early 2018, and this is Automata 2, which came out in late 2018. And while I've not checked it out yet... I have heard that this is one of the best things that BT Bam has ever done. After all, I hear the song Voice of Trespass is quite amazing, but also the proverbial bellow being over 13 minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm bound to really like this, because after all, I am a big prog fan and prog death metal guy, and this is in both realms. So yeah, I can't wait to sink my teeth into this one. <clears throat> All right, next up we have a pair from Corrosion of Conformity. We have Deliverance, and then the follow-up we have Wise Blood. So yeah, these are two um, albums that came out in the 90s. I already had the uh, album, uh, trying to remember what it was called, Blind, that came out in 91. That was like their big breakthrough, going away from the crossover thrash metal sound and more towards heavy metal, stoner metal, and sludge metal. These two albums definitely pushed more towards Stoner and Sludge. I would say especially on Deliverance, like songs like Albatross, Heaven's Not Overflowing, Seven Days, and the title track. Some killer tracks on here, and yeah, definitely, like I said, very different from their previous album, but still really good. Wise Blood, on the other hand, you have some more standouts like the title track, Born Again for the Last Time, uh, Redemption City, The Door, and I and if I recall, I can't remember which of these two feature James Hetfield of Metallica doing guest vocals. I have to go back through them again and or go back through them to find out about it. But still, some cool stuff. It's glad it's cool that I'm getting more COC. I want to get their crossover stuff from the '80s. That would be fun to have. But yeah, COC. And then next up, speaking of Sludge Legends, we have Crowbar with Zero and Below. This came out back in 2022, and I actually reviewed this album, and I thought this was a damn good offering from one of the pioneers of New Orleans Sludge. And I know there will come today, I will rank Crowbar, and I actually need to dig more into Crowbar, but... Yeah, I remember checking this album out, and I thought it was monstrous, especially the song Crush Negativity. Like, Kirk, you fucking kill. So yeah, Zero and Below by Crowbar. If you want to know my full opinion about this album, check out my review that I did when it came out. Speaking of another one I reviewed when it came out, we have Exodus Persona Non Grata. So yeah, the latest album from these Bay Area thrash pioneers, and of course, actually coming up... 
in June, I'm going to be ranking Exodus. So even though I've already reviewed this and I've given you my full opinion about it, it could change because, you know, with rankings, opinions can shift. This might be fairly high on that list or in the middle or maybe towards the bottom. You never know. You just got to wait until the ranking comes out. But I will say this is some really good stuff, though I will say it might be a bit uh, bloated for its for its own good as well i was trying to get at but still exodus can't go wrong really all right next up we have ishan self-titled which this was the newest one that i got at the record store in tennessee and i will say again similar to the last couple if you want to know my full opinion about this check out my review it's not been that long since this album came out only like maybe a few weeks but yeah this is some brilliant experimental progressive black metal what have you ishan's just a musical mastermind and this album is certainly proof of that all right next up we have nine inch nails with the downward spiral this classic from the mid-90s, after all, I'm not the biggest fan of industrial metal or industrial music in general, but I can listen to some Nine Inch Nails, especially the early to mid-90s stuff when they were more on the metal side. I already had the legendary Broken EP, and I thought, you know what, since I saw this, I needed to get it, because after all, songs like, um, I believe... Where's the track list on here? But as far as songs that I do remember, like I believe March of the Pigs was on here. Mr. Self-Destruct was maybe my favorite just because an old buddy of mine showed me that song and I really, really liked it. Of course, there's um, there's uh, the original version of Hurt that eventually Johnny Cash made more famous. But yeah, very dark and it's a lot different than what Johnny Cash would do, I believe, nine years after this came out. But, uh, yeah, there's some killer, killer songs on here. Closer, of course, maybe one of the sexiest, quote-unquote, songs of all time. After all, you just watch that music video and read the lyrics. It's like, what is going on here? But, yeah, Downward Spiral, Nine Inch Nails. Maybe my favorite Nine Inch Nails album. Then again, I'm not the biggest fan of them. But when it comes to what I will listen to, it's this and Broken. So, yeah, check it out. Next up, we have The Ozman Cometh by Ozzy Osbourne. This is one I've been trying to hunt down at a reasonable price for a long time. Even though it's essentially like greatest hits and best of Ozzy. After all, it's like mostly stuff from the old days. Like even some Black Sabbath tracks like the song Black Sabbath, War Pigs, Paranoid. But also some of the solo stuff with like Crazy Train and... Miracle Man and such, but the biggest reason why I wanted to get this is to have the song Back on Earth, because I think that's one of Ozzy's best songs he ever came up with, and vocally one of his best performances of all time. So that was pretty much the main reason why I bought this, was to have that song, because it's just such a beautiful, somber tune. But yeah, fairly good compilation for an Ozzy Osbourne uh, greatest hits kind of but yeah check out the song back on earth it's a masterpiece next up we have rotting christ with a dead poem this came out in 1997 and this was the follow-up to triarchy of the lost lovers definitely continuing more on that like gothic metal trope they were going for on the previous album triarchy of the lost lovers although this one might be just a notch Pop, notch more polished than Triarchy of the Lost Lovers, whereas that album still had a little raw grittiness to it, whereas this got a little bit more polished and a little more, I don't want to say sterile, but more streamlined. Yeah, that's a proper word, more streamlined. But still some pretty cool tracks on here, like Among Two Storms, the title track. But yeah, I still got to sink my teeth further onto this, as well as most of Rotting Christ, because new album coming out, I believe, in May. And I can't wait for it, since I loved the last two. But yeah, a dead poem. Next up, we have Severe Torture with Feasting on Blood. This is the debut album from this 
Dutch death metal band, and I've been wanting to get into this band for a long time, considering these guys are often compared to some of the some of the death metal bands that I absolutely love, like Cannibal Corpse, Blood Red Throne, Dying Fetus, Suffocation. Whereas here, it's not quite brutal death metal, but it's brutal in the death metal nature. Definitely close to like old Cannibal Corpse and Blood Red Throne in particular. But yeah, as far as what I know about this band, I need to check it out as well as all the other stuff because I heard this band is pretty consistent in their own right. But yeah, severe torture. Next up, we get to the one bonus album that I got before the trip, and that's Sinistrum with Infernal Dawn. I bought this one off of their band camp because I really, really dug this. Like, so, I actually did review this, so this is an Elizabethtown, Kentucky-based death thrash band, and holy shit, they know how to mesh both genres together really well, and even, like, the vocals... Remind me of Nick Holmes during his time now in Bloodbath. Like, they're very evil-sounding. But, again, if you want to know my full opinion about this album, check out my review. It's really fucking good. And then, finally, we have a pair from System of a Down. We have their debut album, their self-titled, and then their third album, Steal This Album. I've been needing to get the rest of the System of Down catalog because I've only had Toxicity for a long time. And I was a pretty big fan of System of a Down growing up. Like, I believe I first got into them courtesy of their last two albums, Mesmerize and Hypnotize, which is the only one, which are the only ones that I'm missing. I need to get those at some point and then I'll have everything. But yeah, two very different albums. So did Self Titled. This one, I don't, again, I see a lot of people call System of Down a new metal band. I don't really see it. They don't sound like Korn. They don't sound like Slipknot or Deftones. They just kind of are their own thing. So I think alternative metal, maybe a little avant-garde-ish, is more appropriate. And this, yeah, you do have some new metal-ish moments, like in the song Sugar, but then it turns into thrash metal at the end, and that's one of my favorite system tracks. Spiders is a really cool track. But overall, really good debut that a lot of people loved in 1998. Now, Steal This Album, this one came out right after Toxicity, like literally a year later. And I love how the album covers just written in marker Steal This Album because this was around the beginning of the music downloading controversies and stuff. But there are some killer tracks on here like Inner Vision, I-E-A-I-A-I-O, um, but my personal favorite is the closer streamline. Like it's just triplet city with a gorgeous melody lead. But there are some other killer tracks on here like uh, chicken stew, bubbles, boom, nougans. But yeah, both albums are really good. I don't think System of Down have a bad album. I think every album's very fucking good to outstanding. So yeah. A little bit biased concern. I grew up on them. But yeah, it's just... Uh, and actually, I got both of these in a two-pack. They had them in a box for a two-pack, and it was like 17 bucks. I was like, that's a steal, because it was cheaper to buy them together than it was to buy them separately. But yeah, I'm just glad to have more SOAD in the collection. And that, ladies and gentlemen, does it for yet another CD collection update. So I am now caught up... Now, it's probably going to be a little while before I do another update because I haven't gotten anything coming yet. But I do plan on making a few big orders here in the next month or so. And for the 40th update, we're going to go ham on that. But anyways, what was your favorite album out of everything I showcased? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, keep your horns high and your dreams wet.